So just to give people a little background, how did this meeting take place? You found me? Listening on YouTube and uh, went through a variety of your videos and uh, was impressed. I, I feel bad for you, sir, but it's okay. <laughs> okay, that's good. Uh, I'm, I'm praying God will bless this conversation because I'm not interested in demolishing people when they're being sincere. Now, we were talking, your view, just to clarify, and maybe you can then reiterate, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of the Father, is not a distinct person from the Father. The Spirit of the Father is the Father. And the Word in John 1 is God's mind. That's what you said, right? In a sense, I did. The Spirit of God and the Spirit of Christ is one and the same. And the, that's why I see it. Um, that's why I'm one for you to talk with you, yeah. as well as when I look at John's, uh, first John, St. John 1, it, to me, traces back the word of God to God in God. And so uh, the revelation or the word of God is not revealed until God says something. Yeah, so you're you're interpreting the word as not a person in fellowship with God, but as in the, in the mind of God? as an idea is that how you're interpreting it? uh yes uh well i guess that's i guess i can say it like that say i you wouldn't know anything about me or or my thoughts until i tell you or sure. do something but the the only problem that you have there is that you're defining the word as not someone but as simply god's way of revealing himself so that this word is not a person that was already existing alongside the Father, but is simply God's way of revealing himself. That's how you're defining it, right? Yes, I do not see it as a person. Well, we have some problems with that because okay. the, the prologue of John establishes and sets up what he's about to teach in the rest of the gospel. When it says the word was with God, I'm not trying to get technical here. I'm trying to overwhelm you. I don't like when people do that, but sometimes we have to go into the grammar. That same phrase is used elsewhere. The word was with God. God. And I want you to, if you have your Bible, I'm going to show you where that exact word with, and I can give you the Greek, but whether you know the Greek or not, it's still even the English word with to make the case. So it says was with God. And then John 1, 2 says, and he was with God in the beginning. Now I'm going to show you how John uses that term with. If you go okay. to John 16, okay, you have to read 25 to 31. I'll let you read it through and then we'll go back verse by verse. John 16, 25 to 31. Okay. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs, but the time cometh when, when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. At that day you shall ask in my name, and I will, I, and I say not unto you that I will uh, pray the Father for you. For the Father himself loveth you, because he you have loved me and have believed that I came out from him. You want me to keep reading? Yeah, all the way to 31. I came forth from the Father and am come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. His disciples said unto him, Lord, lo, uh, no, his disciples says unto him, Lo, now thou speakest plainly and speakest no more in Proverbs or no more Proverbs. Now are you sure that thou knowest all things and needest not that any man should ask thee. By this we believe that thou came forth from God. Jesus answers them, Do ye know, do ye now believe? So you now understand he doesn't correct them. He goes, Now you finally got it, huh? Right. But now make sure you understood that he's saying, I'm not speaking in Proverbs figuratively, I'm speaking plainly and literally. Correct. Because he says in John 16, 27, 28, I have come from the Father into the world, and I'm going, I'm leaving the world going to the Father. You see that word too? Yes. To the Father. It's the same word in John 1, verses 1 and 2. When it says, with God, it's pros. It's a preposition. Now, not trying to, again, press you with, with a great. I'm just letting you know it is the same word. So when Jesus says he's going to the Father, you would you believe that he's not going back as simply an idea in God's mind, but he's going there as an actual person side by side with God, right? When you're talking about after the resurrection? Yeah. I believe that he is, he is bodily going back to God. Sure, exactly. So he's there bodily next to God the Father, so they're side by side, right? I don't see him as side by side. I see him sitting on the throne. Okay, but on the Revelation 5. John 17, 5 says, the glory I had with you before the world was. So with him, alongside of him, whether on the throne or not, he's still with him. He's not him. Well, yes, and if you're looking at, yes, I see that. I also see um, him um as the tabernacle of God from that perspective in Revelation yeah. 5. You, yeah, you can say that he's the tabernacle of God, even though in Revelation 5 he's not the tabernacle. He's the lamb that was slain with seven eyes and seven horns, and he's the lion of the tribe of Judah. There he's not said to be the tabernacle, but that's still 
Okay, so he's sitting on the throne. He's sitting on the throne. That's right. But he's not the father whose right hand he sits. See, now we're going too many tangents. In okay. okay. Jesus is he bodily next to the father. Okay. Because even Revelation that you're referring to, if you go to Revelation 5 and read 6 and 7, it says the lamb in verse 7 took the scroll out of the right hand of him who's on the throne. So obviously they're next to each other, face to face, side by side. Even okay. in the book of Revelation, right? Revelation 5, 7. And I beheld and to and lo in the midst of the throne that's the middle of the throne right read it and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders the, the elders stood as it was slain have uh, stood a lamb as it was slain having seven horns and seven eyes which are the seven spirits of god sent forth unto all the earth and he came and took the book out of the hand of him that sat upon the throne that's what you want me to read right yes, so the one sitting on the throne who is he that's god and the lamb who took the scroll out of the hand of god on the throne who is he that's christ so that's the point christ is there side by side face to face alongside god on the same throne so when he says on the throne that didn't answer the point so okay. if we go back to john 16 28 hold on one second one second okay right verse six again um i beheld Low in the midst of the throne. That's the Keep middle. Keep emphasizing that because that's making my point. It's not making yours. Keep emphasizing it. Go ahead. But midst is middle, right? Is he the one who has the right the scroll in his hand? Well, when it says stood, that word stood there mm -hmm. say is it, it connotes standing up. And who's the one seated with the scroll in his hand? See, we're it playing. Is, it is, we see one sitting on the throne, which is God. And so Jesus is the Lamb standing, right? When he stands up, we see him as the redemptive Christ. Who I didn't ask for your commentary, so don't exegete it. Answer the question. Okay. The lamb okay. standing is not the one seated, right? Correct. So instead of dragging this and making it an hour, why don't you just be humble enough and admit the lamb is different from God sitting on a throne and he's there face to face. Okay, we can move on. We can move on. You know, because you brought me to Revelation 5 when the point was in John 16, 28. Do you uh -huh. agree when Jesus says that he's leaving the world going to the Father? He went there not as an idea in the mind of God the Father, but as someone who would be actually there, as you said, bodily next to the Father, alongside the Father in the same throne? Yes. But then we have a problem with your position because the first part says he came from the Father into the world. And then he's going to leave the world and go to the Father. So I want you to show me, because it's not a parable, he's speaking plainly, not parabolically. Mm -hmm. okay. Why you accept that the part of him going to the Father means he's actually going to go there next to the Father. But when he comes from the Father, he wasn't there as someone who's personally distinct, but as an idea that became personal only when he entered the world. Where do you get this from? I see it there, but I mean, we're seeing two different things. But Read it plainly, he says... And then it says, and this convinces us you came from God, not as an idea that became personal or bodily, but you actually came down from God as you're actually going to go to God. And he's speaking plainly, not parabolically. So you can't try to then allegorize this because he just said it's plain. It's not parabolic. It's not figurative. It's literal. Okay. So, so basically um, from that perspective, you're saying that the spirit of God and God himself is not the same. Where do you see the word spirit in John 16? We're talking about Jesus because you talked about the word. We'll get to the spirit in a minute. The, the word is, the word there is logos, a logos, right? And what does that mean? To me, it means the word of God that is accurately documented. No, because if the word of God is with God before creation, there's nothing accurately documented. If you talk, you mean in scripturation, there was no book before creation. I know, but I'm, you asked me what logos mean. Yeah, but that's who Jesus is said to be, the logos. And logos doesn't just mean that. No lexicon confirms what you're saying. So you, again, you can tell me what it means, but you need to prove it. So in that context, John 16, okay, Jesus is going to the Father as an actual person, Yes. saying bodily, then the coming from the Father, you're saying he didn't come as an actual person because the word was the idea in God's mind and only became personal when Jesus was conceived in his mother's womb, but that's not the meaning of that passage. Yeah, I, I hear you. I hear you. I'm just looking at when it says beginning. I'm I'm not talking about uh I'm I'm, I'm going 1, all the way back I'm going all the way back to the beginning. John one three tells you this is the beginning before the time of creation. All things yes. were made through him. Yes. Nothing has been made. So there is no documentation before creation. Why does God need to document anything before anything exists? He illuminates us first so we can understand. There is nothing to illuminate before creation. Are you reading the flow of John 1, verses 1 to 3, and not 
butchering it because John 1 says the word was there before creation because 1 3 says that word who was there in the beginning is the one who brought all things into being why does God need to document anything before creation for who okay let me go back John 1 verses 1 to 3 it says in the beginning we're talking about the beginning correct beginning of what verse 3 creation okay so in the beginning was the word already there it says in the beginning was the word so the word was already there right they say it was there so before creation correct Yes. So why did you say the word means so that accurate documentation? Accurate documentation for whom? There's no one there. I just, I just define what logos or logos mean. You're butchering the definition because if I bring you up the lexicon, it has multiple meanings. Why did you choose the one that you like? Well, that's the one I understand. You made, you, like I said, I can Prove see. your it. assertion. I don't care what you think or I think. Prove it from verses. You're going on tangents. So let's okay. come back to the issue. The word, how can it be? impersonal when he's with God, not simply in God. And that term with, as I'm trying to show you from John, means to be face-to-face -face with, intimate personal relationship with. How I mean, does God have a relationship with an idea in his mind? I'm just looking at the word itself. No, I have, you know, I have the, uh, I have the, I have the, the, the dictionaries and all this stuff right here. I, I don't, you know, I can see, I don't want to, you know. Um, but, so uh, let's come back to the point. Okay. Did Jesus go to the Father as an actual person? Yes. So then on what basis in John 16, 27, 28, do you say when he came down from the Father, he wasn't a person that came down, even though he went back as a person? Where did you get that from John 16, 27, 28? Okay, well, well, when he came. Came down from the Father, right? Into the world. When he entered into the world. From whom? Through Mary. No, from whom? It says the Father in John 16, 27, 28. He, I came, he, he the came. into the world. And I'm leaving the world and going to the Father. So right. going to the Father means he's going there as a person. Coming from the Father into the world, why are you now depersonalizing it? Okay, let's look at Star Wars, him coming into the world. Okay, start from there. 16, 27, there. Did he not say, I've come from the Father into the world? Yes, when he came into the world, that's where we're going to start it, right? No, you start from him coming from the Father into the world. He was with the Father. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. When he yeah. first came into the world. Okay, he came from where? From God. What was he when he came from God into the world? Was the Logos a person or an idea? It was a thought, a mind of God. So you again buried yourself because I just asked you, Jesus said. Let me give you an example of what I'm saying. I, I'm, I'm talking to you, right? That's I'm not the same because when the Father talks to Jesus, what is he using when he speaks to Jesus? He's not using his Logos. When the Father speaks to Jesus, what's coming out of his blessed mouth? You are my son today. I have begotten you, Psalm 2, 7. But when the Holy Spirit ascended uh, on him as a dove, he said, Thou art my beloved son, in so whom I'm was well God pleased. Using there? He was, what was he using? Words or no words? Words. So, but if the words, logoi, plural in Greek, are distinct from Jesus, then if I follow your butchering, God is speaking to his word with his word. So God's word is speaking to God's word because God's word is not a person, but God's command that comes out of him. So you're making mishmash out of the Bible. Okay, friend, this is kind of too much for you. Let's go to something else. Because you said the spirit of God is God the Father, right? Yes. Go to John 15, 26. Again, I, like I said, I pray the Holy Spirit gives it to you, but you're not getting it. Now, I want everyone to hear what you said. The spirit of the Father is God the Father. He's not a distinct person. Okay, John 15, 26. When the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you. Who is he? It's the Holy Spirit. So yes. Jesus is going to send the Father to believers, right? No, here it's saying Jesus said, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit or the God. Who's the Holy Spirit according to what you just said? I said the Holy Spirit and the Spirit of God is the same. So Jesus is going to send the Father to his followers. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit. So Jesus, and Jesus, no, it doesn't say that. That's your point. I can, read, I can show you. Listen to my argument because you just embarrassed yourself. You okay. Just said, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is God the Father. Is Jesus sending the Holy Spirit? Yes. That means he, according to you, Jesus is sending God the Father. Yes. So you are going to with God the Father. Being yes. Sent by Jesus. Yes. Then that's why prove. you're a Bible butcher. But then finish it though. But when the the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father. Good. Keep finishing it. Even the Spirit of Truth, which proceeded from the Father. Now, to show you how stupid your position is, if the well, Spirit proceeds from the Father. Let me finish, let me finish it, and then you can then you can. You can up. finish it. It's going to add to your burial. Beat, beat me up, okay? Okay. Which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. Okay. I can go. Now, 
Let me now show you why you're a Bible butcher and may God grant your repentance. The okay. Spirit proceeds from the Father, and mm -hmm. the Spirit is the Father. So according to you, Jesus is going to send the Father from the Father who proceeds from the Father. Is that what you believe? Yes. And I'm sure. Say it again. I want everyone to hear this. Say it again. Okay. No, no, say it. No, 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 no. Say it again. So the Spirit that proceeds from the Father is the Father. So Jesus is going to send the Father from the Father who proceeds from the Father.